I'm Andrew Barber, and I'm the creator of Fake Short Drive. With Fake Short Drive, I started in about, it was like October of 2007, and at the time, you know, I, I was going to so many different hip-hop related events in, in the city of Chicago. There was no coverage of these local Chicago artists, you know, unless it was, you know, Kanye, Common, Lupe, or Twista, which is like, you know, the, the Mount Rushmore, I would say, of Chicago rappers at that time, at least. I, I saw there was a gap, so I was like, okay, well, somebody needs to be covering this. It was 2007, 2008. That was a transitional phase uh, within the music industry, especially in the digital age. As we know, CD sales have been decreasing since the early 2000s when Napster first came out or whatever. But I think now pretty much everybody's online at the moment. But still in the mid 2000s, a lot of people hadn't really you know, figured out the blogs or, or free music. At the time, like, I was looking up at these older guys and I would say, yeah, send me your music. I'll post up. They're like, what? You want us to give our music to you to give away for free? Like, are you crazy? And it took them a while to kind of embrace that. And I think you've seen people kind of get into that now, but at the time it was such a foreign concept. The young kids who have really taken off embraced that. They saw that that was the future and they kind of embraced it. Whereas maybe some older people kind of fought it but you can't fight technology. Technology will win every time. Are you doing, are you having drums or anything? Or is it just me? You know, it started off just as a blog, but now it's kind of expanded into a, a media company or multimedia company where we do concerts, we do events, we do parties. Uh, we consult for a lot of different brands like Beats by Dre and Red Bull. You know, we, we've just kind of, you know, taken what just at once lived online as just a place to blog about music has now turned into a full kind of a lifestyle brand. I think a lot of the artists get into it for the wrong reasons necessarily. They, they want to be cool, they want to go to shows for free, they want to get backstage, they want to stand on stage, they want to hang out with famous people. But you can't, you're not going to last long if that's how you treat it. The fame doesn't put food on the table. The fame is whatever, but you have to make this a business. I think a lot of people want to, you know, skip those steps and go, okay, well, if I can just get on XYZ blog, then I can automatically become famous. But that's not how it works. Like, you need to build a fan base. I mean, I've seen some of the rappers that get the most attention in publicity nationwide, they can't even sell out a 400-person venue in their own hometown. Whereas, you know, certain artists, before even anybody knew they existed nationally, they were selling out venues. And they were doing it the old fashioned way, going to high schools, selling tickets hand to hand, not being too cool to actually work and push their brand, thinking somebody else is gonna do it for them. The best way to support your artists nowadays is to just be a fan and support, go to the shows. Stop trying to get in for free support them because that's how they make a living you know go buy a t-shirt music is free now we all know that but figure out other ways to support because i think a lot of times because uh, music isn't seen as like a tangible thing now because it's not a physical copy that people just necessarily devalue it and they just think it should be free but no they put there's a lot of hard work and energy that goes into it so just be a fan you know i think that's what we're missing uh, a lot nowadays is where are the fans